uh, and there is a lot of interest in what is thought of as is there actually a reproducibility crisis? And nature went as far as to say, let's ask people and see if they agree uh, that there is a crisis. Uh, and so they surveyed 1,500 researchers, and 90% of them agreed that there was a significant crisis, or I, I don't know what a slight crisis is, but a slight uh, <laughs> crisis. So 90% of their surveyed researchers. Now, who? Are these uh, surveyed researchers? Well, there are 700 biologists and 100 chemists and earth environmental scientists, medicine physicists. Psychologists, psychologists are in other, other. We don't, this is our crisis, and they're taking our crisis from us uh, and calling it their own crisis. Now, this is an important distinction because there are very critical things that it, between these two modes of research that have implications for how it is we generate inferences, particularly statistical inferences about what we're finding. And the key one is that p-values in null hypothesis significance testing are interpretable in confirmatory analysis, but they're not interpretable in exploratory analysis. We use null hypothesis significance testing as hypothesis testing. We have a pre-existing idea, and we use this method of statistical inference to give ourselves some degree of confidence of if there's nothing to detect here, how unusual is this particular result? But the validity of that mode of statistical analysis depends on knowing the universe of tests, tests that could be conducted uh, on that data. Uh, and that universe is only definable if we know it before we observe the data itself. Because as soon as we observe the data, then the data influences the choices that we are going to make in how it is we analyze the data. So the, what we have been spending our time thinking about at the Center for Open Science uh, and with many, many others who have been engaged in this enterprise as a collective effort uh, is how do we nudge those incentives and the, the norms of, of the culture so that we can live by the values that we collectively already have. And we think about it in terms of this uh, pyramid uh, where there are a number of factors uh, that lead to behavior change uh, across uh, a, a cultural discipline a, a wide, on a wide scale. Right? First, we need technology that just makes it possible to do the new behaviors. So if there are behaviors that aren't yet done, we need some way for people to engage uh, in those behaviors. Ideally, that technology will make it easy to do those behaviors. Rather than adding a whole bunch of extra burden of new things that I now have to do in order to get my research done, can we integrate those behaviors into the daily workflow, make it easy for people to transition uh, into those behaviors that will be more effective? This is testing. I, I have a pre-existing idea, and we use this method of statistical inference to give ourselves some degree of confidence of if there's nothing to detect here, how unusual is this particular result? But the validity of that mode of statistical analysis depends on knowing the universe of tests, tests that could be conducted uh, on that data. Uh, and that universe is only definable if we know it before we observe the data itself. Because as soon as we observe the data, then the data influences the choices that we are going to make in how it is we analyze the data. So p-values lose their diagnosticity, uh, sometimes completely lose their diagnosticity. So we don't know how to interpret it as a measure of unusualness, of how unlikely it is, because it depends on how many tests uh, could have been conducted. Uh, we did a review of just a sample of 33 social personality journals to see what has happened with adoption of top uh, in those journals in that uh, specific community. So those thir there are 33 journals that publish some social personality psychology. They're not necessarily exclusively that, but they're all ones that have representation of social personality psychology. 70% uh, have s more than zero steps on top. So I mentioned there's three levels. So we could just say if you get to level one on any of the eight, you get a point. If you get to level two, you get two points, right? So we can just sum up the points. Uh, so 70% have taken at least one step on one of those dimensions. Uh, and 52%, more than half, uh, have taken more than five steps across these dimensions, either doing like a very aggressive data sharing policy and mild on other things, or small steps uh, on multiple policies. Uh, 